Okay, thank you. Welcome everyone to our defense of our academic model, which is project-based learning. We're from Birchwood Blue Hills Charter School. This is our 12th year as a school and we serve students in grades seven through 12. We're located in far Northwest Wisconsin in a small, rural, beautiful community. Um, and our district offers many options for different learning styles and we're proud to be one of those. Um, so we would like to share with you our building blocks that we use for successful project-based learning. We don't know everything and we're constantly changing um, in order to try and improve. So we hope we spark some ideas for you. We're gonna start with our parent communication, which is a vital part of our school. And one piece of evidence used for that is a document that we've created over the years and it's called BVHCS Info. It's used to communicate with both potential parents and current parents, as well as students. It gives some philosophy background for project-based learning. And also you can see here, um, we outline some expectations that may be a little different than a traditional um, school experience. We also like to highlight um, our unique and innovative ways of learning by these six key elements that we've developed and honed in on over the years. We try and showcase that we are a little bit different in a lot of aspects, and we give some links within the document so parents can explore further on their own. Hi, I am Loretta Greener, and I am a parent of a student attending the Birchwood Blue Hills Charter School as well as a governance board member for the BBHCS. And as a parent, you always wonder what your child's day looks like. Well, the BBHCS has made this possible by offering a lot of different options for us as parents to keep connected. One of the first ways is their Facebook page. Now this gives you an inside peek of their adventures and achievements on a regular basis. And it gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling just being able to catch a glimpse into their day. Um, and their advisor posts them, you know, throughout the, the year. The other option is our BBHCS YouTube channel, as well as our presentation nights. Now, presentation nights are where the children can showcase their learning to an audience of family, friends, and community. And because of the pandemic, we were not able to do the live and in-person um, presentation. But luckily we have the BBHCS YouTube channel where they were able to stay connected by watching and interacting on their very own live channel. The other option that we have is the school website. And if you go to the main school website and then just click on the Explore BBHCS, you have an amazing video that provides you with a really great explanation of what the BBHCS is really about. And this is benefiting all existing parents as well as new parents and the community as well. The final thing that I suggest as a parent is to join the governance board. Um, it's another great way to stay connected by joining the governance board. I've been a member for five years and I was able to get an inside scoop of what my child is doing or what's up and coming. And you get your first hand opportunity to discuss with the teachers, things that are working or not working for you and your child. So I'm hoping as you can see, us as parents have an amazing connection to the BDHTS. Hi, my name is Hunter and this is these are group think sessions and parent teacher conferences. They are hosted three times a year. They're about three months long and, and student-led. They help show us and our parents what we need to do and where we currently are for the school year. Hello, my name is Shay. Uh, so this doc is shared with all parents at the beginning of the year so they have an idea of the project process and how the children do projects at the charter school. Phase one of the project process all starts off with an idea and your inspiration. Phase two is when you start researching your topic. Phase three is you start making your product. And phase four is when you finalize with our advisor, Jenny Landa. Uh, project led charter school should take from 14 to 21 days to complete and finalize in head rush. Uh, there's also the rubric. This rubric is shared with all parents at the beginning of the year, too. 
So they have an idea of how the children's project is judged at the charter school and how much credit they earn on a project versus how much they could have earned on a project. Projects are judged on research, work ethic, core value, skills, product quality, presentation, depth of knowledge. Presentation nights. Presentation nights are celebration of learning where families, community members, teachers, and students gather to snack on food and listen to students showcase their learning. This event is scheduled three times a year. Students either present projects gallery style to individuals or small groups of people, or present in one of two classrooms to a larger audience. These show, uh, events allow students to develop soft skills needed to, to work collaboratively at school or in the workplace. COVID hasn't, uh, uh, wasn't going to stop our presentation nights, but it did allow our uh, BBHS students to think a little differently. Uh, our first presentation night was done to an empty school, but was streamed out to a larger audience through our YouTube Live. I'd like to showcase a little bit about our advisor training for project-based learning. So we have um, a personal learning plan developed for students. And from that, I took the concept and put it for our whole school's learning plan. And this website uh, houses many different facets of our educational system of project-based learning, including um, historical documents, looking back at what we've done over the years and also what we're doing now. And that helps us, of course, to plan for the future. So also within this uh, website is our professional development for each school year, which takes place at both the local level, like around our CSOC and close by with other schools, as well as statewide and national conferences that we've attended. And not only have we attended, um, but also been lucky enough to present at all of the Innovative Schools Network conferences. And by attending and presenting, we get to collaborate and learn from many other schools, both in the sessions that we attend and also in presenting the collaboration and questions that go back and forth um, really help us to learn and grow. This is an example of a website I created for a session I did on a day in the life of a project-based learning student. And then I've also um, been lucky enough to present with the CEO of HeadRush, which is our learning management system and how our project process works hand in hand with HeadRush to house and plan and report on all student learning. And then in 2015, we requested a school review through the Innovative Schools Network. And this was a, a formal process with interviews uh, conducted by Dr. Stephen Rippa. He did a very comprehensive um, analysis by interviewing all of the key members, including students, parents, um, teachers, advisors, um, administration, governance board members, school board members as our authorizers, and also um, traditional school teachers to ask them about their experience um, with the BBHCS. And through that process, um, he gave us a comprehensive plan, strategic plan, and also um, highlighted how we could improve as well as things we should keep on doing. And at the end of that process, we did receive um, a designation as a laboratory school for the Innovative Schools Network. And this is a picture taken just the other day outside our room. We also have evidence of learning outcomes. So to show um, the learning that has taken place, we do give annual reports to both the governance board and the school board. These reports um, also include student data on testing, such as STAR testing, um, credits earned, and many other facets of data points, but also um, a list of many of the experiences that we have outside of the school walls or outside of the traditional like class type setting. So we learn so much from getting out in the community and learning from 
experts around the whole area and beyond now using video conferencing. Accountability. Most schools receive a state report card each year, but due to the small number of students being assessed at BBHCS, we have to complete an alternative account, uh, accountability uh, document to show student success. BBHCS uses star reading and the BBH, BBHCS data analysis report to determine student achievement and growth in English language arts. STAR math and Alex math report, uh, progress reports determine achievement and growth in math and attendance, graduation rates, participa participation in uh, service learning and activities in humanities help determine student success for uh, on track for success indicators. Uh, included uh, are these examples of the DPI report and STAR data that we use for progress monitoring. Hello, my name is Jonah and I was the leader of, of the 16 Personalities Project. We analyzed everyone's personalities in our school using the 16 Personalities website quiz. During our research, we found a live resource that used a different personality test in the business world and interviewed her through Zoom. With our research, we found a way to arrange seating in our school based on our different personality types. We presented our learning with a play based on characters from the past that had our personality types. And for this project, we earned social studies credit. Hi, my name is Sydney. We get writing credit in our school by sharing a two or more paged writing piece with Jenny Landis. If we have four pages, we get double credit, but that's the most we can get per writing piece. Um, we need eight writing pieces a year. It can be any type of writing we want, but we can only share two of, or two of the same type writing piece a year. For example, you can only submit two realistic fiction stories a year. This is the last training piece I made, which is an essay on breast cancer. Hello, my name is Kyle Greener, and over the summer, I kind of got into building computers. So when I got back to school uh, at the beginning of the year, our old video editing computer didn't work anymore. So I brought it up to our advisor about possibly building a new one, and she gave me the go ahead. So basically, I had to go to three different organizations to get funding, the CPTO Governance Board Educational Foundation. To get these funds, I needed to write grants, or I needed to write out forms, which get me writing credit along with the elective credit that I got with it. Once I got that, once I got those forms turned in, I had to go to several Zoom and in-person meetings explaining why I need the funds and how they would help their school. After I bought all the parts, the building process was straightforward. I just had to put the main components in the motherboard, the motherboard into the case, and then wire it up and put the graphics card in. Setting it up was also pretty easy. Uh, uh, I had to install the operating system on it using a USB flash drive, and then our IT guy came in and installed all of the Adobe apps on it, which we used for its functions, like video editing, photo editing, sound editing, animation, etc. I myself have edited several videos on it using Premiere Pro. Um, our advisor, Jenny, has used to edit, edit several videos on Premiere Rush, and a student currently using it for photo editing and animation for a project. Hello, my name is Rory, and I'm going to teach you about my ukulele project. So, before quarantine started, I found that I liked playing the ukulele and started playing one of my favorite songs on it to try and get to know it better. When quarantine started, I found that I had a lot of time to learn and play more on the ukulele. As I did, I grew more and more better up until I got out of quarantine and were finally back in school. During that time, I found that another student was actually going to the choir room, so I thought this would be a cool time to learn even more about the ukulele. As I did, I started learning more songs by other artists, including making my own songs and riffs. Here is an example of one of the riffs that I made. I earned performance and composing credits for this. 
Hi, I'm Diane Johnson, superintendent and parent of a charter student. Our last section is performance measures. Each year, students and their parents fill out a survey providing information on the areas they feel things are going well and also areas in which they feel they need more support. Sample questions for parents include, what is the main reason you decided to enroll? Has your child's advisor helped guide and support your child's learning this year? Do you know what the governance board does at BBHCS? Sample questions for students include, how did I demonstrate collaboration? Do I feel safe, safe at school? What technology do I feel most comfortable using and teaching to others? This leads to the team developing learning and socio-emotional goals for the next school year. PLC or personal learning plan is a student-based site that only students have access to. We put our bios in there for feature references and our favorite projects so that we can improve on them or keep them as good examples. We also put our start testing results in there as well. This is our quarterly progress report. It shows what credits we have, or it shows us what credits we're, how many credits we're supposed to have and how many we do have. For example, the top green line shows where, we, where we're supposed to be and the two lines underneath show us where we currently are. So the student is behind in math, but is caught up on reading. The Headrush credit tab is used to track and measure what credits we have in need. After we do a project, Jenny will put the credits we earned into Headrush. In Headrush, we can see the credits we got in this year or in total. Like for me, I have 90% of my credits for middle school graduation. I worked ahead in credit in seventh grade and it crossed over into eighth grade in some subjects. This is our academic transcript. It shows what credits we have and how many credits we do have. This is my tran transcript. I have so many because I transferred from a different school to the school this year. So all my credits from my old school got transferred over. We've developed a new uh, school evaluation, and it's based on our charter with our authorizer, our school board, and it's based on, on section 2.2, which is our curriculum. And these five educational goals that you see on the left um, are spelled out right in our charter as things that we want to be unique and different with. And then we created goal details like what are the measurements that show these different goals? And then the goal criteria are benchmarks that we set up for where we thought we would be um, best served to be successful. And you can see, we just started doing this. It will be done um, usually in the summer at following a school year and evaluating the previous year um, with COVID last year and being outside of the school walls and working virtually. We needed some credit work, and so we found ways and are working to improve on those. So it's a good evaluation for us. So we would like to thank you for your attention during our defense. I want to say that we have all of these links, and I will be sharing the links to this. in a. It's in a doc where they're all listed there, so you can look at those. So they'll be on there for you to review and check out later. Thank you. And we welcome any questions about our building blocks for project-based learning.